Hi, everybody. My name is Zach Edwards. I'm a senior threat analyst at Silent Push. We have some really interesting new research, and we were able to expose the queries publicly that we use to track this threat actor. So I'm going to briefly go through some of those queries. This is a threat that is exp exploiting a Twitter advertising loophole in order to promote their cryptocurrency scams. So there's a whole bunch of details in our public post. But what's interesting about this threat is we actually used one of our new tools to track them. So this is the web resources scan within our web scanner. And you can see we're basically just searching one of the domains. So this was the early lead that we had uh, that we'd found uh, malicious content on this domain. And so we were able to basically search this domain. And then from the results, there's a few files that we ended up realizing that they are reusing. And so within these results, you can see PNG files, CSS, text files, all different types of, of content that we, we saw on this page. And you can actually pivot on any of these file types. So a quick basically grab of the hash, and we search that SHA hash here, and it returns that saved resources.html that we were seeing, and it actually shows up on quite a few other domains. So this was our first sort of successful pivot with a very specific HTML file that only this threat actor is using. But within that page, there's also another pivot. Uh, we grabbed the SHA for a CSS file. So they are also reusing a CSS file. You can see it's the same number of results. So we think of this as kind of like an overlapping query where it does pick up the same infrastructure, but it is nice to have multiple ways to track something in case the threat actor does make minor changes. And then further, we can also review that one of the domains that we picked up from the additional pivoting, it actually had an additional CSS file that was slightly different than the previous ones we've been searching. So by taking that, that SHA and searching that SHA, we get a long list of CSS files and we get slightly different results with a few uh, of different sites that we hadn't seen previously. So this is what would we call a really solid fingerprint where we know this threat actor is reusing CSS files. These web pages that they're creating and spinning up on many different domains definitely look similar. And so that similarity is reflected in certain files. And then our team not only found those file hash pivots, we also realized that combining an HTML Mail title, the ASN, they're heavily using Cloudflare, and a path of slash landing, we can actually pull up an even slightly different grouping of sites. So again, this gets some of the overlapping sites we'd found previously, but then also some new domains and some new flavors of the domains, which are a little more obscure and are on the dot digital suffix. So we consider these types of pivots to be really solid where it's not a file-based pivot, it's a, a deployment uh, pivot where we're tracking these deployment decisions they're making and how they're setting up these sites. And then finally, we can also appreciate that this uh, whole sort of community that they've put together of all these malicious sites, they're also reusing favicons. And so we're able to take the favicons that they've used on these sites, and we actually pivot into even more infrastructure. It gives us some ties to Russia, and there's, while only 400 results here, you do see a, even more variety, appleworld.mx, so Mexico potential targeting, and a variety of different HTML titles that we hadn't picked up from the first queries. And so this is clearly a threat actor that has some variety in their campaigns, some variety in their infrastructure, but for some reason are really reusing specific CSS, HTML files, favicons, and even deployment decisions. So hopefully us exposing some of this publicly, sharing our pivots will help other folks track this threat and help us put a stop to it. Thanks so much, everybody.